What's up, YouTube? Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Prestige Reef Talk Show. First thing I need to say before I introduce anybody, if you've just clicked on this because you're like, I want to know about uh, Ryan from BRS, I presume that there will be people who have, who have clicked on it just for that. Um, this is a weekly live stream where we do a, it's basically a, a kind of like a, just a chat, really, where we talk for about two hours about various things. The Ryan stuff will be in here, but it will be at the news section at the end. So if you're if you're watching that now just for, for the BRS thing, it'll be in news. So come back in about an hour and a half. And if you're watching this after, I'll put a pinned comment below so you can see the Ryan stuff. That was like a disclaimer saying, I clickbaited you suckers, but don't worry, what you actually want is at the end. <laughs> it's not clickbait. I got accused within about three seconds of this video being scheduled and going up. Yeah. I got accused of clickbait. And it's like, it's not clickbait. <laughs> it's oh, not. Oh, oh, you actually were accused of it. Well, that wasn't, <laughs> I didn't know that. No, I know. But anyway, so anyway, this we'll talk about it, I promise, but it's not not for two hours. Instead, hello, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm Reef Dork. And with me, as always, is Ryan from the UK's number one coral selling website, uh, and, Pressing and, and, and Fish Rescue. Oh, um, and, and Fish Rescue Extraordinaire. Yeah, good. Ryan, what, Ryan, how are you and why are you a fish rescue person? Uh, I'm good. Thank you. Um, I, I will ask you how you are, so you can just say yes, I'm fine. I'm, Alex and I saw each other earlier for like hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, I yeah, I'm good. Uh, and why am I a fish rescue person? Because I have now, uh, I now own your fish currently, don't I? <laughs> Very much lease. All right. <laughs> well, oh, they're on a lease. See, it's funny because it just it just so happens that I have just got into the fish selling market as well. I've expanded Prestige Reef, so I'm now selling fish. But I only have a very, very small selection of fish that I can sell. Uh, I have a mystery wrasse, for example, um, a oh. white-tailed coal tang, uh, a scarlet so. corkfish. So um, if anyone's looking for those, you let me know, because I've got some lovely plump ones. The, the white-tailed coal tang, that you don't see many of them. There was a, a period when I got that one where there was a few coming in, and there were a few in... Because they, they tend to, they, they all come in at the same kind of time. They seem to be seasonal. I've noticed that. Oh, interesting. But that, yeah, that's quite, that's quite a, a fair point. But there, there were a few of them, but you don't see them very often. And I've not seen one for a long time, actually. Yeah. That's my most expensive ever fish as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, it's doing well still. It was funny because, so obviously I went to Alex's house earlier. Um, Alex will tell you in a minute, but obviously your tank's broken down now, isn't it? Yeah, completely. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I took all the fish back. I put them all in um, to the, the same tank. I put some food in there for them, uh, which was pellets, not realizing that Alex has never fed them pellets before, <laughs> basically. And they looked, looked at me going, what the hell have you just... <laughs> they looked at me like to go, what have you just done? <laughs> uh, Alex normally gives us PE mysis. <laughs> yeah, we get, we get the like the premium. The live mysis, yeah. <laughs> I have never seen... There's, there's probably about eight, ten fish there, isn't there? Not a single one of them, not even the clownfish would take a bite. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, you'd only just had them back, hadn't you? So you only just got them yeah. back. Well, yeah, that is true. But I, I just after that, I fed them my sis and they all ate straight away. So right. it was specifically the pellets that they were snubbing. <laughs> I'm not interested in that. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll come on to explain that in a sec. But first yeah. off, just a quick question from Island Reef. Opinions on the Waterbox Frag series. I love them. I have a frag. I have the two foot one. I almost got the six foot one for my next tank, but I changed my mind in the end. But I think they look wicked. I love the, the shallow. And actually, Ryan, you saw that tank today, my two foot one. Yes, and yeah. Being able to see top down, it's yes. just all the, really easily all the time. Just turn your power on, heads off, and they're wicked. I love it. Are really you like letting it. everyone know you don't have a, uh, a lid on that tank? No, I don't, I don't tell people that. <laughs> so, don't tell people that, no. And also, when, when the flow's on, you can't see in the top, can you? <laughs> no, you can't, but that's easy to fix. <laughs> Um, right, so the reason that, uh, yeah, so I'm breaking down the tank, as as you might have known if you'd have um, joined last week. My main yeah. tank has been running, <clears throat> excuse me, for about six years. Uh, and it, today, I actually wasn't planning on breaking it down. Today, what I, the plan was, Ryan was going to come up and take all my fish because he's looking after them very kindly until I get the upgrade. But the plan was uh, just get rid of the fish. And I was going to, I mixed up a load of new salt water because I knew you were going to take a load of it. So yeah. I thought, well, I'll just fill it back up. And then I'll um, I'll work out the rest next week, over the next week. Because I had a load of corals in there still, like, encrusting over rocks and stuff. And I was like, I'm going to figure that out. And then when you left, I was like, why am I, why would I refill that? Why don't I just break it down today? Yeah, that's what I thought. 
yeah, it didn't make any sense. So I just thought, well, let's just do it. So I went to, I took a, a load of corals in a massive box to Reef Keeper Moss End at my local yeah. fish shop. Um, uh, got rid of all of those. Uh, then pulled all the live rock out, pulled the water out, pulled the sand out. Um, there weren't many. Oh, someone asked a brilliant question earlier on Instagram. Someone asked if I found any, when you're breaking down a tank, six-year-old tank, someone asked if you found if I found any freaky stuff, any cool critters or whatever. And I've uh, last time I bought a, a rock from someone with a really established tank. I, it was it was it had a, an acro on it, which is why I bought it. So I just I broke the acro off, but it split the rock in half. And there was this thick earthworm, earthworm looking thing. It looked like an earthworm, massive, that was just completely buried within the the, the rock. So God knows what it was eating, because it was like encased completely. Um, but I didn't see anything like that with this. There was a barnacle wasn't there yeah yeah yeah. there was yeah and there was oh a baby uh, rock flower anemone that i did yeah know. that was true yeah and it was a different yeah. color to the other one wasn't it yeah so it was by i've got one that's massive and it was just by that but it was it was completely different color so yeah i, I so I, I knew that they dropped um sprogs or whatever i don't know i don't actually know what it is but splitting effectively i know they do that but i'd never seen it and i've had probably 10 10 of them maybe more i was under the impression that they didn't do that you that you might be right but i was under the impression that they didn't do that i thought they only um reproduced sexually so you obviously have two in your tank don't you uh so reef dudes had um, a load drop off and they would just like pop up and around maybe, the base maybe i'm wrong then i don't yeah, yeah, yeah. i literally because i looked into um to breeding them once before and i thought you had to get like a few of them maybe there's different types um maybe. but i think if you just have one of them it doesn't produce more i've seen them like sometimes they like they look like they're smoking and they're just expelling sperm stuff. <laughs> stuff. nice uh, gametes or whatever they're called yeah um spaffing jizz into the water column sorry <laughs> I had to nice. so so i've seen them do that before so maybe that's it and maybe so the, the jamie craggs i mentioned last week there's jamie craggs the like the, the coral guru the coral godfather coral yeah. spawning godfather was on beyond the reef podcast with uh, adam from frag garage last week and i finished listening it's about two and a half hours long but i didn't want to listen to it at like two times speed or whatever so I, I did it over a couple of sittings and i finished listening to it today and he had some really interesting stuff. it's just go and watch it it's so good it's really really interesting but um but yeah so tanks breaking down nothing really freaky in there uh just you know, the barnacle and the, the little baby rock flower and everything. But I stripped everything down today. Some still got water in it and there's still some equipment in there. But otherwise, it's completely, it's gone. The tank is is no more. If this was me, the tank would be like that now for the next three weeks. <laughs> We've so yeah. still got water in the sump. <laughs> I've been messaging, so this guy who's buying it, I've been messaging him today. I think we're going to try to get it picked up in the next week or two, basically. I've got, for the next week, I've got to, to uh, strip out all the um, the stuff, all the equipment, because some of it's all just all just like the cables are everywhere. It's just it's going to take time. Yeah. But I'm going to do that by Saturday, and then he'll collect it up sometime after then. So it'll be gone soon. But it has to get gone. So does Mrs. Reef Talk still listen to the podcast? Yes, I have nothing oh. to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I was doing some measuring actually on yes. the back of your suggestion today. But oh, okay, good, good. Because <laughs> I was like, um, I know I was going to say something. I was like, actually, no, that was probably not the time to say it. <laughs> It's fine. <clears throat> it's all good. There's nothing. There's nothing to hide. Yeah. Kind of. Other than the three um, girlfriends you told me about. Oh, is it just three now? Yeah, I had to cut two. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. So, uh, so that's that's basically it. That's that's what's going on. The tank is gone, and yeah. I'm now. Which I've actually. So you asked me today if I was sad about it. Yeah, what I did. did I, yeah. Well, not really. Like, <laughs> I I don't feel. I would have thought that I would be, but I'm not. I'm just like, yeah, let's get it done. It's fine. So. Do you know what I noticed? Um. Well, while you were doing it, firstly, you're terrible at catching fish. That's the first yeah. thing I noticed. <laughs> and the second thing, you you get you put a lot of care and attention into the fish when you were getting them out and putting them in the bucket. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you didn't like grab them and swing them around and throw them in. You it was like very you, you treat them very delicately. Mm. What I realized is these are your pets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not that, like I uh, trust me. I've seen loads of tank breakdowns before, and sometimes you're like, "Wow, how does that thing even survive after you've just chased it oh. around the tank for ages?" Yeah. Um, but I just, yeah, you, you. I thought to myself, you genuinely really care, and not everyone is like that. Really, I just assumed yeah. it because it's, you don't want to. If you're chasing them around, that so for a start, that stripping out all the rock that they've had there, yeah. and with, there was a rust that was buried in the sand, digging him out. That's stressful as hell. 
Yeah. So I like I just I don't see why you wouldn't want to be like I was <laughs> as I was pulling them out. I was going sorry, 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 sorry. Go, I, I literally that's why I mean bucket. <laughs> of everything that happened today. That's the thing that I took away from it the most, which was interesting. Oh, really? I was thinking about it as I drove home. Like you genuinely really really care about these animals. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and it was like shit. Now I've got to look after them. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's um don't don't you worry. I did. A, I gave him a little pep talk. I was like, look. Wherever you've been, however you've been treated before, it's nothing like that here. <laughs> they're going to get, well, so most of them, are, there's none of them are, are thin and looking like they need more food, but they get no. fed better with you because <laughs> you feed more than I do. Because you've uh, got 10 do, times do, as much water. Yeah, but I also got a lot more fish than you. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they, are, they are currently, all, most of them are in a tank. They're in the Zoa tray, firstly, um, just so you, you know where they are. Um, most okay, of them yeah, are yeah. in the Zoa tray. Uh, they are in with two tangs. Um, of I that I have, I have a Tamini Tang and a um, uh, it's actually it's a Mimic Lemon Peel Tang, oh, and cool. both of those they, they've the Tangs have showed them no aggression. They the Tangs never come above the egg crate, not the egg crate, the like the the yeah, frag wraps. Frag. So it looks like there's nothing in that tank. And when I, now I've put your fish in there, I'm like, oh, this tank has got it's got stuff in it now. Mm. Um, with the exception of um the White Tail Coal Tang is in the tank below that because I wouldn't put it with the tanks and there was no tank in that tank. Yeah. Okay. So, but other than that, yeah, they're all, they're all completely fine so far anyway. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Well, I'm sure you'll take good care of them and I appreciate you looking after them. You've saved me from having to sell them, which would have been gutting. So. Yeah. I, that, I actually said, cause obviously we filmed a video today and I actually said that I said, there's no way that I would, I would, I would find a way somehow uh, to keep my, I mean, I got a lot of fish now, <laughs> but I got, I'd find so when I shut down the coral farm to expand, I'd be like, you know, you got that six foot tank. Can you take like a hundred fish? <laughs> yeah, that's probably how many I've got. It wouldn't surprise yeah, I bet me. You have, yeah. Do you know what? I just thinking the other stuff, the other freaky stuff I found, didn't, yeah. nothing freaky really, but I found three large Mexican turbo snails that I didn't know I had. I knew I had one, maybe two. I feel I don't feel like I've bought three. You know, <laughs> I probably did because they, they they're years old, but they're big, big Mexican turbos. They do turbos do breed in the tank. Did you have any small ones? Um, none that yeah. I saw. There was there was a, the shells, the one that had died years ago. There's a specific type of turbo. I'm not sure if it's the Mexican ones that do breed in captivity. I have thousands of them, um, mm. and they usually reach an equilibrium. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I started with like I know five of them. And I've got, I've, I've moved them all to, as they've, as they've um, spawned, I've moved them to different tanks and now I've got like hundreds of them. So it might be, might be, then again, if you've only got three of them, it's probably not that. No. Okay. Um, but that, yeah, it, it was just cool. I like that. And um, uh, I also got to see, I've got, I've got a, a brittle star. It's a, it's like a brown and black brittle star. It's nothing special, but for a brittle star, it's relatively decorative. You know, it looks yeah. one of the cooler ones. Is it striped? Uh, you, I don't know if I'd describe it as striped cookie, brittle. Oh no, the striped ones are serpent starfish. They're not. They're not the. They're not the brittle ones. Oh, uh, okay. To be fair, it could be a serpent star. I could be misidentifying it. Um, I'll see if I can find a um, a, a picture. No, are the, are the arms it. smooth? Yes. Oh, then it'll be a serpent star because uh, serpent... brittle brittle starfish have like lots of little bits coming yeah. off each arm okay there you go serpent thing you learn something every day so it's a serpent star and i put him in years ago probably i think when i first got the tank so he's at least six years old so i know that they live a, a reasonable time now um hbc chemistry just so you know um you're gonna ah, have to wait for the, the end now to find out or you're gonna have to go back to the beginning it's up to you <laughs> it's not clickbait it's this there's See, this is the thing and so that someone the, the person who commented saying nice clickbait lol or whatever when i first uploaded this video um i like that's it's, it's not this is for me this title and, and thumbnail that's not even an exaggeration i'm not even overselling this i think that i this as far as i'm concerned this is this is huge for this is anyway look we'll come back onto that because i this is i don't want to interrupt the flow of the normal one but there's a little pinned comment there that says come back in about an hour when we it's in the news section so we'll come back to that but it's not clickbait i promise <laughs> it's fine it's just a sad farewell it's sad. It is sad. I'm really sad. But anyway, yeah. we'll come back onto that. Um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, so that's um, that's that really. That's my my tank woes. One thing to, that I noticed today, actually. So you came up and looked at these two tanks up here. 
no, 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 no. Just to clarify, no, no, he's no. not died. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Uh, the ta- so when you came up uh, today, you saw this these two tanks up here. Yes. The one thing, the first thing you said about the the cade over my shoulder was. Oh my god! Like I see it now. Yeah. Yeah. All you can see is the GSP. It just looks empty. Yeah. And you were like, oh my god, there's actually loads of stuff in there. <laughs> that tank behind Alex is actually really, really nice, but you just can't see it when it's um, when, on on the yeah. live stream. It's funny, yeah, you really can't. But there's so there, there's the uh, the hammer corals that are, are on the back wall there, yeah. that are stuck there using um, uh, nine, 45 degree angles that you can buy at reefdoc.etsy.com. They're wicked. <laughs> um, but when they're they're already getting quite big, there's another one that's going to go there that's just on the sand bed at the moment. But when they're grown out, they'll be proper like flowing, and that will look really cool as well. Yeah. But there we go. Um, but that's my week in reefing. Anything else? Anything else going on with you? Or you? I mean, you've just been. Mm, what else again? Uh, so obviously the other day I picked up a load of um, Goniastrias and Favias I mentioned on yeah. um, well those have all been fragged now uh, eagle eyed viewers will notice I have a red nose again <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not as bad as last time uh, but about a month ago I had it and I didn't know what caused it last time it's not a spot which is what people assume it is um, it, it and it's actually really sore and so everyone laughed last time. And then I went into the coral farm. I was fragging those goniastras and I came out of the cor- coral farm and it was like instant. I had a red nose. It was as simple yeah. as that. Now I got this to show you. This <laughs> is what I look like after I cu- come out of the coral farm. So this is a mixture of like seawater, slime, um, like the cement they make the frag plugs out of because it, it turns into like a um, like a paste. And that all gets on my gloves. And what's happened is I've obviously done this at some point mm. to wipe my nose. And it's literally like, like I'm not sure what it is, whether it's, yeah, yeah. But it's not. It's like a sting or some sort. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> or some sort of coral bacteria or whatever. But it's um, it's quite unpleasant. And uh, so that that's obviously what's caused it. What is interesting is some people do have sensitivities to corals. So some people are more sensitive to them than others. Some people can touch a torch coral and they can actually feel mm. the sting. Yeah. Um, if you've ever touched a torch coral with a card in your hand, you can feel the sting, I can assure you. <laughs> um, now, the problem is coral sensitivity isn't like other things where you, you can like train yourself to get better at it. Mm. Coral sensitivity gets worse. <laughs> mm. So the more you're exposed to it, the worse the right. reaction gets. Okay. So I'm starting to wonder, I'm like, is this going to cause me a problem? <laughs> because in theory, like it could. And I occasionally, I actually have it on my finger as well uh, at oh, the really? moment. Yeah, I do have it on, I have it on my uh, one of my fingers. Yeah, I've seen you wearing like um, uh, rubber gloves, yeah, yeah. Well, like latex gloves. Do you not yeah. wear them all the time? I guess Most of the time I do wear I do wear them. But obviously, all, I don't wear them when I'm <laughs> like taking corals out of the co- to, yeah, to yeah. pack them. It's, it's mainly when I'm fragging them. Uh, I'm not even sure why. Well, well, yeah, I'm not even sure why. Like I do it for fragging, but and I, always with the zoas. It's funny because people come to the coral farm now and they're like, "Are you selling me something dangerous?" Because you won't touch them without gloves. And I'm like, "No," but I got taught a lesson. <laughs> yeah, and to be fair, you fiddle around with stuff all day, every day, and dozens and dozens and dozens of different corals and yeah. all that. You can after fragging corals, I can literally taste them in my mouth in the evening. I'm not joking. Yeah. Um, I I need to start wearing a mask. Um, there are some things I do wear masks with, but because it's hot in there, it's it's it makes your face too sweaty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I I do wonder. You know how they like there's all these things that you find out years later, but like asbestos and stuff like that, they have harmed people yeah. over an extended exposure. I'm like, either these this coral stuff is going to make me live forever <laughs> because I'm getting something that mm. like is Super that. Power unknown to science yet or i'm gonna die when i'm 40 <laughs> yeah i think it's probably the latter if i'm honest <laughs> probably mm. because obviously we haven't evolved in a way where we are meant to interact with these creatures no so... if you're watching in the chat by the way and in the comments afterwards as well uh, say if you've ever had an allergic reaction to a, a coral or if you've been stung by a rabbit fish or something i had a a small rash on my on my arm once from a it was a euphilia or it was a torch or a, a hammer or yeah. something like that. I can't remember what it was. Very small and it disappeared after a couple of days. It didn't hurt. I didn't even feel it. I just noticed it. Yeah. But that's it. I've never had anything else like that. I get it literally all the time. Yeah. Okay. Like, but you oh, had... 
that's almost it, died my... from Pally well, that was... <laughs> <laughs> they've had just found another one on my arm oh, really? so i get it yeah it looks like i'm like got some sort of weird disease half the time yeah. <laughs> so yeah um, well, that's like uh, go on Oh, so you, I was just answering what you said. Yeah, I, I did have a bad reaction to Zoas once, but that was that was my own fault. Um, I, yeah, well, I, I basically I knew the risks and I didn't take the precautions that were required. I took some, I took uh, hand pro um, protection and eye protection, but I didn't mm. wear a mask. And I'm not even sure how effective a mask would be, if I'm honest. Um, unless it's like one of those, I think they're called like P45 masks, which are like specially designed yeah. for things. Um, but I don't think just one of those face masks everyone was wearing for COVID would make a difference. You need a full hazmat suit, don't you? Like, <laughs> I, I have full armed ones. I have ones that go really? all up. Yeah, yeah, I do. And um, I can't remember why I've got those. I think I <laughs> originally got those for Zoas, but they're too. Um, the they takes away your dexterity. They're too thick, so you can't you can't glue things down. So I just use the the smaller yeah, ones. That's the thing. Yeah. It's interesting because quite a few people are saying, yeah, look, I I have had issues with corals or things singing or rashes. Uh, John might had a bad reaction when he asked how much a chalice was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> um, what else? Actually, so the rash from a Duncan, which is crazy. Duncan, you wouldn't think it, but it's got tentacles, I guess. Um, what else? Carpet and is crazy. Torches. Of uh, he's touched the torch a number of times, not on purpose. No things at all. All right. <laughs> there I is. Did have... oh, sorry. No, you go. You, you go. Rush. Uh, rush from uh, every time he touches his invasive GSP or Gorgonian. I'm surprised at that. Okay. Well, that was the one that made me remember. There is something in the soft coral tank, which is very, very powerful. <laughs> okay. And when it gets me, it gets me good. And I'm and I don't know what it is. I literally, and I'm like, is this something that's biting, like a little creature that's biting me? But it's not instant. It's almost like I'll touch it. And then I don't know half an hour later, I'm like, ah, like it's like proper yeah. pain. Yeah. So it's. There um, was, uh, you could run ozone in that tank. <laughs> See if that helps. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. As I said, it's just, I'm, I, I, I think. It is the um, pink star polyps is what they're at, but they are actually a type of encrusting Gorgonian. But I don't know if, if that's what it is. Or or it could literally be something in that tank, which is like a little critter that's biting me. Um, oh, my God. What was I going to say? There was... Um, oh, yeah. So to ozone today. Did you notice... I know the tank was empty, but when you got there, did you notice that it was the water was crystal clear? No. No. So that's I'm not, not going to pretend. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want you to. That's why. <laughs> but I don't. I don't. I've, I've noticed an improvement. I noticed yeah. an improvement quite quickly. But with me, and I'm probably not dosing enough because I was only I was only running it for like I think four hours a day at maximum, and it, before then it was only two hours and one hour. But I noticed an improvement. But it wasn't like absolutely blow me away. Wow, this is incredible. But... I am. Um, that's the one thing I wish I'd I'd asked you while you were there while I was there because I wanted you to show me, mm. but. Obviously, we were distracted by other things. Yeah, 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 I wanted to see how it worked. So I, I was going to do a video, I, um, but I, I still think it's I think it's better if I just leave it until I've been doing it for six months. But I'll Can show you myself. Do like a thirty-second video that you send to me on WhatsApp. <laughs> Personal one. It's, to, yeah. it's, setting up is really easy, or well, the way I did it anyway. Um, yeah, I just I thought about putting it on the water box <laughs> just to just to trial it. I, I I might eventually put on if it was great. I might put on the coral farm, but the coral farm yeah. is fine, so I don't, no need. So I would have it on my water box, my frag, if um if I had a skimmer, but I don't have a skimmer. So yeah, today is the first day actually speaking of the water box that all four lights have been on. So uh, since oh, the really? dive, oh cool, yeah, yeah, today's the yeah, first yeah. day I put all four in one. So I had one on one end and one on the other end, and I thought. Yeah. I'm, I could just put a third, another one on, and I just thought, oh, look, I'll just put both yeah, on. Okay. Um, if you, just, if you, have, what's the latest then? Is it if you've got algae everywhere, dioxins back? No, what's going on? No, it literally. So my sand isn't pure, like prist, uh, like pristine white anymore, it, but it's the same as your sand, if you see what I mean. Where your your sand's not like white. It, no one has really, really white sand. Like it comes out of a it's, half of it's covered in coral. I'm, <laughs> I'll get my stuff, <laughs> but it kind that's, of looks. That's what I noticed. The, the sand has a, it, and it doesn't look bad at all. This is literally just normal. Yeah. Um, it, it has like a very, very fine, just like little dots of green on the sand. Where the, yeah, where the, yeah, it's literally yeah. algae, algae, which is yeah. growing on the rock, is growing on the sand because the sand's not moving. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then the other side has 
a very very minor like little bit of diatoms so yeah. what happened when i first put the light on there was a little bit of diatoms and a week later it was gone and then we replaced by algae mm. then i put the second light on the same thing's happening where yeah, there's okay. a little bit of diatoms then it dies out and it will turn turn green yeah 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 so that, oh. that's my expectations of what will happen so you yeah. had a mont uh, you accidentally left a monty frag in there it died <laughs> when you did the blackout. Oh, it died okay it died <laughs> it's funny because i was gonna put i was gonna put um for the next video of that i was like and the and the number one thing that everyone wants to know yeah, did yeah. that coral survive it didn't <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay that's probably fair enough yeah to be expected yeah um it's, it's interesting because how long can something you could survive a week without food a dog could survive a week without food probably wouldn't be happy you can survive ages without food water you're stuffed but yeah but with coral a week without light gone that's yeah, it yeah. but it it wiped out all algae everything when i when i did that the only thing it didn't wipe out was the coralline algae oh really yeah the blackout really was weird. like three weeks three weeks two weeks no the, so the blackout was i think 10 it was either a week or 10 days i think it was 10 days okay it's just to, just to make sure that that coral yeah. was dead <laughs> um <clears throat> so that was yeah so and it just wiped everything out pretty much and then mm. it, and it almost it reset the tank which was I'm, i wish i'd done it months ago if i'm honest <laughs> uh because yeah. but well, you, you live and learn good job yeah yeah uh what was the other thing oh the other thing is i oh i got a sun i got sun kiss bounce mushrooms back i haven't had those for ages so oh yes you... so i had um i these are sentimental to me um there was the first <laughs> why is it weird it's not weird these were the so this was one of the first corals which i invested in oh i see so we... <coughs> you should show the video from last week those people, those, those of you that don't that don't follow me on Instagram, um, there was one of my followers. I can't remember his name now. Edited the uh, the live stream. So Alex, <laughs> there's a video of Alex saying, "I love Ryan. I touched him tonight." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, but where where was I? Uh, I I can't remember what I was saying. Mushrooms, eh? sentimental oh, mushrooms. Yes. Yeah. So I had. So the reason they were sentimental to me is because they were one of the first corals I bought as an investment. I think I yeah. paid like three hundred and fifty pounds for it, and which was like crazy money for mm. me at the time. This was just before the coral farm started, and I, um, I grew them and I fragged them and I sold them to people, and then I lost my last one, and then someone who bought them from me was shutting their tank down, and they went, "Oh, I've got these. Are you interested in them?" And I was like, "Oh, it's one of my ones." <laughs> so it feels. See, I get attached to things. Um, mm. So it's nice to have have a genetic. It's not the same one because obviously it's a frag of the original one. Yeah, but genetically, right. it's identical. Lineage. So, so I bought a small colony of them. I've got five of them. Are you going to keep any in your water box as like a pet coral? <laughs> uh, I think that the majestic would definitely eat mushrooms. Uh, I've, I've tried mushrooms with a majestic before. Said, yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna. I might get rid of the majestic and and just keep you keep the king eye just just because then, if, then you've only got one fish to worry about if you see what i mean yeah, yeah, it fulfills yeah. the angelfish reef criteria whereas the majestic seems to be far worse than than the other ones do you know what you should do uh move just, the majestic on yeah get, get a regal yeah i did think about that too but remember the king eye is, is a risk as well so yeah 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 but the majestic i know is a pain in the ass because i've literally watched it peck every single coral that's gone in there Very and i was at um i was at a shop once and they had a majestic and they're like oh yeah it'll be fine with coral don't worry it'll be completely it'll be completely fine with coral um this shop no longer sells marine fish um <laughs> <laughs> but so i said no problem all i ask i want you to prove something to me take a piece of coral and put it in with a majestic and just see if it because the chances are if, if they're saying new in its tank it's like in like the first it's, minute it's yeah. not going to do it i don't think it's going to interact with it so i think it was no, a high okay. chance i think it was a high chance that they yeah, would have yeah, been fine yeah, yeah. she put a mushroom in it with it it instantly started eating it That's i'm like so there you go that is why i'm not buying it <laughs> do you know what i did i once bought three pyramid butterfly fish yeah. which are supposedly reef safe and mine were for the time i had them probably only six months they were they didn't touch anything lps sps there was nothing but the second i put them in the tank 
Yeah. One of them turned around and saw an Aptasia and pecked at it. Yeah. And I was like, yes! But oh, this is amazing. Like, because I hadn't, I didn't expect that at all. And yeah. that was the only time he ever touched it. <laughs> ne- like, never oh, touched it. He got didn't like the taste, obviously. No, exactly. But yeah, very nice. I um, consider just, the, Oh, sorry. Go on, go on, go on. I was going to say, I considered getting a long nose butterfly the other day. Um, just, oh, I've been looking at one of them. Yeah. Just, just out of intrigue, there was one that was feeding really well. Um, again, they're probably good for Aptasia control. I don't know how it would be with a copper band. I'm not sure. Butterflies sometimes don't like each other very much. Anything that looks the same, and uh, because they both got the long beak, so that they would probably look at each other and think, "You're my competitor for food." Yeah, yeah. Because we both go pecking in amongst the rocks, so it's a risk, I would say. Yeah, I know, I've never done it, but yeah, I tried a very small victory today with my copper bands. Um, okay. I had one that would not uh, eat mastic, but I still try it with it anyway because mastic's yeah, really good. Because you're not going to be f- put, copper bands get thin easily, and if they start to get thin, you then have to start to put loads and loads of mysis in to bring them back. Whereas if you just put a bit like a stick a bit of mastic on it and they'll eat it, it usually fattens them back up. Um, but it's 50 50 whether they'll eat it, I've, I've found. Right. And this one, normally I like get some mastic and, cr- and, and crush mysis into it. Yeah, okay. Whereas this one, I just went, oh, I just put a bit on there, and it, you... and it, it went for it. Oh, that's really good. Do you use the powdered mass that you have to mix up all no, the little I'm pots? Too, I'm, yeah. I'm too lazy. <laughs> it makes your freezer stink as well. <laughs> I know, but have you, have you seen how much the pots are? No. I, you'll be shocked, I reckon, if you Google how much they are. I I'm bought sure. one, the little tins of the little... Um, yeah, th- set one, the, seven, <laughs> let's have a look. Three gram mastic. I'll Whilst tell you're you. doing that, I'm going to show people what my tank looks like as at today. Empty. And that's with that's with the tank with with white lights on. I put all the white lights on, so no blue. Yeah, and the, we the should have done that earlier because the know. video we filmed is so blue. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, that's yeah. a point. I don't. Know. Uh, I don't. I didn't take any footage of breaking the tank down. Don't worry, or, I got some for you. Yeah, but I didn't take any footage of the, the day before I broke the tank down. I should have taken loads of videos of all the cars. I'm an idiot, but anyway, it's it's one of those things because it's the same. If something bad is happening, uh, like so. If you have a problem, you don't feel like filming, do you? If you if you have at loads of Aptasia ever, if it's an ugly tank, yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. go, Oh yeah, I really, really want to film that. You it, you lose and that is probably the with, same with, thing. With this, I, I, I just didn't I didn't even think about it. If I'd have thought about it, I would have thought I'd, I would have been like, Great, let's do it. I thought about making a video of breaking down the tank, but breaking down the tank is actually quite a lot of effort anyway. So yeah. filming it and thinking about what, what clips you need and all that. Yeah, it was too much. So anyway, whatever. The, the yellow long nose butterfly. I wanted yeah. to get one. I almost got one after my copper band died. Yeah, because it was an SPS tank, and I thought it's probably going to be okay. But because I was expecting to shut it down at some point, I didn't do it. But I'd love one. Yeah, just don't think I'll do it in my LPS tank. Too risky. Mm, yeah, that's true. Actually, that's true. I think. See, I need some little wins now with the water box. Mm. That like I lost momentum on it. Um. Uh, because of there, obviously there was an issue with the fish, and then there was an issue with the diatoms, and it's like I lost my love for it. Yeah. Uh, so I need some little wins, so I can't go and start buying like loads of crazy fish that eat coral. You see what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I I don't want to put it in and go, oh, that's not worked either. That's not worked either. You want so, some positivity for six months or? Yeah. So as I said, I might I might catch the majestic, take it out. Um, the yellow tang in there is also really aggressive. Like and it's like weird. It's never you been aggressive. In, <laughs> it's never been aggressive with any like in, in in the other. It's obviously higher up in the hierarchy. But it so my clowns are breeding at the moment, so they're literally laying eggs. They like they lay eggs. The eggs like literally every three weeks. There's just constantly eggs there. <laughs> mm. And um, the the yellow tang just went over and just went smack. They're just, they're literally by themselves. The yellow tang on the other side of the tank. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not sure how I feel about you. <laughs> So you asked me earlier if I'll have tangs in my upgrade. Yeah. And I'll have the cult, the white tail coal tang, which cat so mine's not being aggressive, but they can get aggressive. <laughs> my my soul by then. See how it goes, yeah. But uh, yeah. I don't I, I don't know if I'll get any other tangs. Because it's a hate aggression. I hate it. <laughs> it stresses like, me out when I'm watching it. I prefer the zebra zoma tangs. They, they would they would be my favorite tangs. Any of the cell fins, yellow, purple gem black or, or whatever because they're less aggressive or because they look cool uh i think that they are less aggressive than the acanthus ones uh well, they're yeah. less prone to disease than the acanthus ones they 
are more likely to eat corals. No, 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 eat coral. They're more likely to eat and less. Yeah. So yeah. Um, the reason I said eat corals is because the regal. Well, it was more of just a slip, but my regal uh, regal tang um, eats some corals. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of, that's a known thing as well. They're, yeah. They're one of the more uh, risky Bastard tanks. tanks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Most of them won't, I think, but some of them do. I think when you have a coral farm, you realise that a lot more fish eat coral than you than you ever realised did. Yeah. Okay. So, but they're willing to just try like fox faces and things because you might have a fox face and go oh look it's fine like like i don't have um it doesn't eat my coral so this is fine but yeah. i have got a lot more coral yeah if you see what i mean like a lot more variety to, you get loads more experience because you have loads more fish than most people yeah because you're a professional fish keeper basically and you have loads more coral so there's yeah. lots more um there's so like if, if i have one fish and three corals yeah, there's a one in three chance maybe that, or there's a chance that he'll eat three. But it's a very small sample size. But if you've got four hundred corals or ten thousand corals, yeah, and forty five fish, there's all there's masses of possibility that much more likely that you'll experience that. So yeah, you get you get a, you get like a really intense level of experience. If I keep a fish for five years, you could keep one for five weeks and get much more experience with all the variety and all the all that sort of stuff. So. Because when you said intense, uh, did you mean worse? <laughs> yes, I do. Mean. Worse experience. <laughs> Actually, and there's, I'm just going to go because there's a, a Sky Crusader super chat. Thanks very much. Uh, says he just like to say thanks, guys. My LX270 is set up, which was Box LX270, which is the one you have, yeah. which is six foot long and two and a half feet front to back. Yeah. Oh, I do like front to back with. Um, Having seen your water box, I'm like, I'm still surprised because you wanted a smaller tank. You wanted a lower tank originally, didn't yes. you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Which you're not getting. Um, uh, so I'll clarify that because the, the actual glass is taller than my yeah. current tank, but the cabinet is lower. So actually, it's, it's about three inches lower than my current tank, and that's my main issue. I wanted it. I just I wanted to. I wanted to be able to look down. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's see, that's interesting because because your tank is so tall. You're going to be like, oh, this is great because it's lower, but it's not going to be as low as your water box, is it? No. And that's so I was looking at the water box. I, I love the idea. The only thing with the six foot water box, because it's only 16 inches tall, like the two foot, three foot and four foot frag that yeah. are 16 inches tall, the dimensions look wicked. I just wonder if it's a, a six foot. It might look a bit funny, a bit too long and thin. Um, but it, I think they look wicked. I think they're anything. Yeah, I just think they're cool. <laughs> there was... There were, I once went to collect a fit. It was actually a Tamini tank. I went to collect it from someone, mm. and they had a frag tank as a display tank, similar to yours, um, but probably a bit was bigger than yours. And it was mm. in their living room. And I was like, "That's so odd. <laughs> why would you? Why would you have a, such a like a, a shallow display tank?" But you obviously like it, lagoon style. Yeah. And so when I first got that tank, it was supposed to be literally a frag tank. So it was to yeah. store frags for my main. But it didn't ever. It didn't ever really do that well. SPS it didn't. SPS didn't do well in there. And eventually, I got to the point where I was like, "Sod it! I'm going to go LPS." And I love it. It's the LPS is just so cool. <laughs> That's really interesting that you just said that. And the reason it's really interesting is because I've wondered how you're going to handle starting a new tank again. Because remember, I thought that the water box was going to be easy, <laughs> and it has not been easy. Remember, I haven't put the same level of effort in that I would do if it was just one tank, if you see what I mean. Um, yeah. But it it definitely... So you've basically just said, I started another tank expecting to have the same success as your, uh, as your yeah. display tank, yeah. but it, it just wasn't. And I know you're, it's a smaller volume and you're keeping SPS and there's probably heat issues in that in that room and things like that. The only thing with that is that I I knew I I wasn't convinced I was going to have success with that because it's a small water volume. Yeah. Whereas with this, I am convinced. <laughs> well, you wait, <laughs> you wait. I know, yeah. You can play this back when it goes pear shaped yeah. and everything dies. But, but yeah, there, there'll definitely be challenges. There's always challenges when you're setting up a new tank, and because I'll be I'll be moving at that water box that I've just shown on the screen. I'll yeah. be moving all those corals over to the new one at some point. Not day one. But yeah, and that's that's introducing it to a, a new water, completely different uh, water, a much less established tank, different lighting, different flow. So yeah, yeah. it's uh, oh, I look God, forward God. to the day when when I get a little a little ping on my phone. It says 
uh, Reef Dog has booked a consultation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd have seen that like this. Ah, oh, it was going to be so easy, was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my. I get free consultations anyway. I can just try one here and then just be like Brian. <laughs> yeah, everyone um, does. Everyone does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone does when we're sitting here, don't we? Post questions. Yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? So, uh, so anything else that you've been doing for the last week or so? No, I'd say that's probably about it, if I'm honest. Well, in which case, we'll we'll move on because we want to get to uh, to the news, to the headlines, because I, I recognise that there's going to be lots of people who want to talk about that. A couple of things we've got to do before then. Firstly, member questions. Um, <clears throat> first one is from Push Button Reef, and he's preempting something that's in the news later. <laughs> okay. But he says, are you going to love to reef on the 18th of May 2024? I'm not. I'm going to see Ocean Colour Sea that day, who you probably won't know because you don't understand music. No. No, no, Ocean like, Colour that? Oh, man uh like 90s maybe maybe early noughties indie band wicked anyway whatever um so no i'm not going too young <laughs> too young too young Se second question is from lissia reese who says how can you tell what ras uh, are able to live with each other i have a christmas ras which is a halakoris i think and i'm confused how to know what else is compatible with it so you're a, you're a ras guy aren't you who me no <laughs> you know yeah. the answer you know i don't i've no. just significantly increased my ras population from your ones today <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's only two of them yeah <laughs> that's true. Two. two yeah yeah uh, yeah the mystery and the, the leopard um so the most halicories ras are pretty peaceful and, and get on fine is my experience i had loads of different halicories races together in fact most races generally uh, are, are compatible and you don't have to worry about aggression issues um I have, I did have towards the end, I had a, a yellow rat and a silver belly that both passed away within the last six months or so. I'd yeah. had for about six years. Um, and the, yeah, I can't remember, one of them started bullying the other one. But I think, I think because they were both quite old, when, when, when animals see a weak animal, they, yeah. pick, they go for it, don't they? So I think that's what was going on. I think, I think one of them was just on his last legs or something. But that, I, I never see aggression from my rasses. Fairy rasses can be a little bit feisty, the flasher rasses. Um, <clears throat> but most rasses not, are pretty peaceful. I'm not sure that that's true, what you're saying. Like, I don't know. You'll probably have a better thing. But ras can be a pain in the ass with each other, especially things like um, like carpenter's ras are like really like, they're like the little girly ras, aren't they? They get chased by everything else in the tank. But they're, they're flasher rasses. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. They, they can be a, that's what I mean. They can be a pain. Yeah. And my, uh, uh, I've had a McCuskers. Yeah, but, but you said they were feisty, whereas I find that they're the ones that usually get chased and don't come out to feed. Sorry, when I say they're a pain, so I had a McCuskers flasher yeah. ras and an Aoko ras, and they both, they kind of, I feel like they put other fish out of shape because they're all they're showing their fins and all this. Yeah. They, they, they show off, and I yeah. think they get targeted because of that because yeah. both of mine got bullied to death, sadly. So, yeah, yeah. I agree. But but rasses ras but with that wasn't with other rasses the rasses were fine but do do a bit of googling to find out I've never had a Christmas ras for example J jade ras pain in the ass six they, line ras pain in the ass oh, six line ras yeah, eight totally. line ras <laughs> yeah 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 but halicori's ras are generally peaceful yeah yeah I think thing if you if you, things like the melanaris I found uh, melanaris these are the ras that I have kept successfully together a melanaris a silver belly a uh, canary, well, which is a yellow one. Yeah. Yellow chorus. No. <laughs> um, a possum ras and a peacock yeah, yeah. ras. Those five all get on fine. In, well, in Eric my... Esparo has an excellent point. His melanaris ras was a psycho. Um, yeah, but you've obviously got a weird one. So... I had so I had a melanaris ras that Hooven's ras, aka, that got aggressive. Not yeah. mega aggressive. I'm really sensitive to any aggression. But he was just a bit of a dick. And they are, from, and I've seen, I've seen several people talk about that. So some, this is why I say the, the Christmas ras, no idea. They might, they're all slightly different. But... <laughs> I just realized dragon ras, pain in the yeah. ass. <laughs> There's, ras is such a huge group of fish. They, they, <laughs> they go all the way up to like, what's those, what's those really, really massive ones? Napoleon ras that are like yeah. huge. Massive. There are yeah. rases in, in the English Channel. It, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's obviously not halicories, but <laughs> so I think it's, Let's let's clarify. Just do your research yeah, <laughs> because because yeah. you might get a pain in the ass one, or you might get one from the English Channel if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah, but generally, Halicori's rasses are peaceful. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, Anamsis rasses are peaceful, but they're really difficult. Macropharyngodon as well. The leopard rasses, 
they're generally peaceful. But uh, always check because I've not kept all of the verses. So yeah, yeah. see, I stay um, away from rest. That's why I don't know. I don't know I enough about them. Yeah. I want a yellow ass in my new tank. I just think they're really they're just really bright. Um, last question is from JJS, uh, who said, "I missed last week's stream, but I had a question about the cost of DIY supplements. I have no doubt they are much cheaper, but I don't think you ever mentioned." what the resulting uh, concentrations are. For example, I buy four liters of CKM carbonate for about $30 that can raise the alkalinity in my 100 gallon tank by 118 dKH. So what's the equivalent? And no, I, we didn't talk about that. I don't we think didn't. we know. Do. I don't know. It's literally, um, you, you basically dose and and test and don't, but you dose a small amount of first to see the effect it's having. Um, but go, I, on, yeah. go, on, go on the Prestige Reef Talk Show Facebook page um and have a look i've i've posted the recipe um and you can you can and i've posted links to the uh, this intra labs website which is where we get it and you can see how much the raw materials cost it'll be a fraction of the price of um of of, of proper dosing liquids i i didn't mention this and i'm not gonna mention it now but i was shocked by one of the one of the people in the industry they so they are selling as a, a, a like a like for like product, literally exactly the same with a different logo on it, and the difference was like times ten. I was yeah. like, how are they getting away with this? But to be fair, that you've got to so that that manufacturer manufacturing in inverted commas has got to make their profit, of and course. then there might there might be a distributor who's got to make their profit. Then there's a shop that might, is going to make their profit, and because yeah. we're a niche hobby, it's not like if you're selling mobile phones, you can afford to make. 10 percent profit for example i mean apple uh, take the piss they make like a million percent profit but anyway yeah. you can afford to make a small amount of profit cars the profit margin on each car is small but because they sell billions it doesn't matter corals and our hobby is so tiny they have to charge more which yeah. is part of the reason why it's more expensive. I'm, not, I'm not defending it. i'm just you know just saying it's just the, saying. the other thing that we have to remember as well is they, these products get shipped all around the world yeah, like, yeah. I, like some water <laughs> yeah yeah, they, they move all around. Um, and so there's a cost attached to that delivery as well. Yeah. So uh, unless you, you're paying, for most of the time, you're paying to ship water around the world because <laughs> water's heavy. And you could yeah. just sell the, anyway, whatever. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. It doesn't really, but I, uh, yeah. So because the answer is we don't know, but it's probably comparable to the Fauna Marin current dosing. Yes. That's dosing. what I was going to say. So go and look at the Fauna Marin, see what theirs is. It's prob probably, com I don't know, but it's probably comparable. And that is record timing. The uh, the, the the member questions completed, which means yeah. we are now on to. Don't worry, we're almost getting on to it. Can Two we get more... to the clickbait bit, please? <laughs> I know, it's not clickbait. Stop saying that. Uh, we're getting on to the, um, uh, the, the last. So there's two more things. There is uh, Prestige Reef Fish of the Week first. Oh no, because I don't know the name of it, but you have a picture of it. It is My, a ras. It's, 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 it's the, a leopard ras. Yes. Yeah, cool. It's the ras that I picked up today from Alex because Alex yeah. told me that if I don't keep this alive, he's going to kill me. <laughs> they were his exact you, words. You, you, you can hold me to that, guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a, so it's a leopard ras, but there are a few leopard rasses or fish that yeah. are called leopard ras. So I'm going to tell you the, the scientific name. It's Macropharyngodon meliagris, which is this bad boy. Yeah. Has it got a and common that, name? Leopard ras. <laughs> oh, so it's literally, that's all they call it. I, so yeah, I, to be, it might be. Yeah, this all says leopard ras. It might be like a black leopard. Oh, no, it's not a black leopard ras. I don't. I, uh, leopard ras is what I, I know it as. But there are a few leopard rases. Yeah. But it's just it's so cool. This is this is possibly apart from uh, some of the really finicky ones like the Anamsis ones. I think this is my favourite ras, like attainable ras. It's not. I have a feeling that it, you. You could probably get like 10 of these and then one of them will be fine. Is that why it's so special? So I just, I just think they look cool. That's why the reason I like them. But they, so they, I did a video that was top 10 uh, expert only fish or something like that. Yeah. And this guy was on that list. And then I, I, I bought one because I went to my local fish shop and uh, I talked to Sean Acro man who's been on the show before. Hi, Sean, if you're watching. Um, and he's, he's, he's one of the people, one of the, the shop owners who, if you talk to them, you want to listen to what they say because you yeah. trust them. And he um, he said, you know, specimen selection is vital because they're they're one of these um, leopard rasses that don't the, their mouths get damaged often in collection or in the bags or whatever. So yeah. if, but he he reckoned if you get a good specimen, you're fine. And that's been my experience, but that's the experience of one. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. 
but that, I, I've always I've always understood them to be quite difficult. Maybe it is because of that. But I think all well, a lot of leopard wrasse, unless they're all having the same issue, um, are meant to be difficult. Even like the leopard yeah. peacock wrasse is meant to be difficult as well. They're, they're labelled as an expert only fish. Exactly. They're, they're the genus Macropharyngodon, and yeah. anything that's got that. So it's a long name, but anything that's got that in it is probably diff probably better to steer clear of. There How was some red ones that came in at one point as well. They look gouters. Not sure. I just know them by their colour. Rass. It's no, why is Kuteri? Is it Kuteri? Hang on. <laughs> possibly. It's really it's interesting because Coyote. Coyote. Yeah, that's it. Yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These it's, are cool. We're in this is this will apply to everyone. If if there's something that I'm interested in, I will learn everything I can about it. Whereas I have no interest in Rass. I just go, yeah, there's this red one I saw once. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't even bother to learn the name. <laughs> Yeah, K O T Ras. So this is another macro finger. This is called a red leopard ras I've just seen. So yeah. another leopard ras, but they're really cool. I've never been brave enough to try one, but they're cool. Why why would it be any more difficult than the other one that you've got? I don't know. Well, maybe in the new tank. Do you know I've what not, fish to be fair, I've not researched them for years. Sorry. Do you know what fish you're gonna put in the new tank? Um, well, to the news, don't you? <laughs> I there are probably a couple more, but I I, I want a, a scarus koi parrotfish. Um, which is a <laughs> that's a terrible idea. Why? That's a terrible I'm... idea. Have you had Why one before? Yeah. Um... Do you know why I got rid of it? Because it started eating my currants. <laughs> yeah, so it's a terrible idea. It was eating acros. I think I, I think it's gonna be all right. But that's 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 a possibility, but I don't I've not really given it much thought yet. I look, I know someone who's got one, um, because Jamie's got one and it's fine. Um, but the reason it's a terrible idea for yours is because your tank is not the size of Jamie's tank. <laughs> This is true. I think it's it going to be okay. I don't know. Maybe. Usually, like, you know, I've never seen a small one. They're always like this. They're always I've seen, massive. I've seen a couple of small ones, and I would get a small one, but yeah, they don't—they're not quite as brightly coloured, though. But okay. Anyway, so that's the prestige reef fish of the week, which means we're now onto the prestige reef coral of the week. Yeah, I also picked a coral that I saw today, which Alex is going to get up on the screen at the moment. And mm -hmm. it is a worldwide corals something grafted Stellaria chalice. <laughs> Stellaria chalice. WWC okay. Stellaria, yeah. So this is um this is you saw this in my tank. And it actually looks I better in your tank than that picture, I think. Yeah, that's that's not the best photo to be fair. It's really nice. And under blues, it glows red. And it's so this is the main bit is red, and then the, the, the outside is yeah, kind of yellowy greeny. Yeah, yeah. It's a really nice red. It's quite an unusual red. It's not like a like a Monte Satosa or a branching Monte. It's a it's really a nice one. Oh yeah. It, uh, I mean, quite quick. Yeah, it's a chalice, yeah. and I find chalices grow reasonably quick. Yeah. This is and it's the one thing with this is it's super aggressive. It doesn't have sweeper tentacles that I know of, yeah. but if it touches another coral, bang! Yeah. It, it'll do any coral it touches, and I've had four or five already you'd think i'd learn i put yeah. it next to a raja rampage chalice thinking they're both chalices yeah. uh, and boom it started killing it but um they're probably not both chalices <laughs> they're different whatever so what you're saying is if that touched my nose my nose would actually fall off this time <laughs> yeah completely you'd be a full okay, on needle. but if you want that coral there's i've taken the the, the colony that i had to reef keeper moss end so i presume they'll be fragging it they might sell the whole thing but it's nice and it's not it's pretty you don't see them often in the uk i saw it today Oh, no, no. So I had another one in my main tank. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, you, yes. Did you take that today? No, yesterday. Oh, uh, I was one day too late because I, I would have bought that for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, I'll give you some of the, um, when I break down the water box, I'll give you some yeah. of that. Um, but there you go. So those are the coral of the week and the, the fish of the week. And that means good news for everybody who's tuning in just for this. We're on to the yeah. news. Um, so there's quite a few news stories actually. So shall I go through everything and leave the BRS thing to last? <laughs> yeah, that that'll really annoy people. Well, I can I'm put not... everyone on the list of people we've annoyed this week. Yeah, yeah, four thousand people. So the the headline then from the thumbnail. This is uh, what do I call it? A sad farewell to to Ryan. So right, this was I, I didn't even notice this. So I watch most BRS videos, but there was a BRS video on the other day that I didn't watch that someone told me about. Yeah, it was uh, it was just they do this preferred reefers giveaway. So they just do like a, they give away 10 grand's worth of vouchers or whatever. Um, and it's like a 45 minute long video 
don't think they do it live, but it's a 45 minute long video and they're just three or four of them chatting, going, reading out names from people who are winners, basically. Yeah. So I don't bother watching them because I don't, you don't learn anything. It's just, it, they're just doing it to, to share and to as an easy yeah. giveaway. Plus, we're not the, winners. So they wouldn't read out names. No, would they? In the UK. Not winning anything. But, um, but at the end of that, and there was nothing in the title to, to suggest it, there was nothing on the thumbnail to suggest it. Yeah. At the end of that, Ryan said, and this is the, the story, Ryan said, Hey, uh, by the way, just uh, one secret I wanted to tell you. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm stopping. He's taking a break, basically. Yeah. So what he said was he was taking. I've, I've made a few notes on everything he said. So first off, this is BRS Ryan, by the way. The, Not the me. First... <laughs> I've already taken <laughs> <Yeah>. a break. <laughs> Ryan Bachelor. The first thing I should say is I think that this is, and this is why this isn't, isn't clickbait. You can tell that that like touched a nerve, didn't you? But it, yeah. so for, for me, he is. The, the, if I he's the one person who's given who's uh, given more to the hobby than anybody else in the last decade. Yeah, I think he is the most significant contributor to the, ho the hobby. Full stop. Sanjay Joshi, Mike Paletta, everybody. He is he is the the biggest contributor to the hobby and to success. I think he's been a huge influence on on me personally and to thousands and thousands of people around the world. And so that's why it's such big news. So he's taking a a 12 month break what he said was he, he said he's been doing this for 16 years yeah uh these these youtube videos and he's made over 2000 <laughs> have you ever seen his first video yeah oh man they're terrible <laughs> <laughs> so ryan won't watch this but if you do sorry but but and he, i'm sure he would say this himself but he will know this he's yeah 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 they're so slow and like so hello my yeah. name is ryan we're talking about calcium today and it's <laughs> but that's what it's like when you first pick up a camera you don't know how to do it do you so yeah. but yeah yeah but, but he's been 16 years 2000 videos and basically so this is really common actually there's been loads of youtubers saying the same thing dslr video shooter matty hapoya um caleb pike uh no um what's his name tom scott loads of them have, have got youtube burnout basically they have stepped back or completely walked away and he said that he's got burnout because because of like kind of part of that because he's just kind of it's been doing it for so long that he feels a bit burned out and he said he said some of you this won't be a surprise to some of you because 52 weeks of briefing as season two has been stuttering along he said or words to that effect and he's right because it's kind of the format's been changing and it's not followed it's not been 52 weeks it's kind of been up and down all over the place and actually that's kind of struck a chord with me because last year i changed from weekly videos to one a fortnight and i was trying to change all sorts of things and you probably people probably didn't notice but i was changing all sorts of things because i was getting a bit fed up with certain things and i think he was doing the same with this um with 52 weeks of reefing from the sounds of it from what he was saying um so he's going to take a year off he said a year off this yeah. is the sort of thing though that a man in his position who has given everything he's given tons back to the hobby uh, and he's probably made quite a lot of money out of um brs2 and that's not said with any criticism good luck to him I, i'm very yeah, pleased we're jealous <laughs> yeah, exactly so i'm really pleased for him for that what's he got to come back for i'm not saying he won't i've got no inside information of course he didn't say any of this but i do wonder if he'll step away completely and he'll have a year off and he'll be like i quite like this spending time mm, with my family I he, he might you think he might well come back i don't know who knows you, know, but... you, you miss it you yeah. missed it. I, I obviously yeah. I disappeared for six months at one point where the channel obviously was closed <clears throat> and I came back because I missed it and it was one of the best things I ever did and I think when you come back you come back with a different set of like mindset so at the moment even you felt this I'm, I'm sure you'll you admit mm -hmm. it's like being on a treadmill um, yeah. or, <clears throat> is what a lot of people say but what I like to say is it's like someone has your face against a sand, <laughs> sand grinder <laughs> <laughs> Is what it's like. Um, it's it's not easy um, doing this. I think, look, there are far worse jobs than this, but mentally it, it does wear you out. And it's and it, it's not just me and you. It's loads and loads of people. Um, interestingly, what I said to you earlier, I made a video and I loved making it. And I've, I've actually made, so I made a video on, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. And I made another video today. I've not made a video for like three or four months. And yeah, I made yeah. three days. <laughs> Um, Thanks, backing. Yeah. So you once you've had a break from it, you then get your love back. You you miss it and you get your love back for it as well. So I. So that's that's what. Happen. 
that's what he was saying was that uh, he's going to take a year off. He's going to do scuba diving. He's going to set up his own tank and not film it. He's just going to set up to enjoy it himself with his family. He's yeah. going to spend a bit more time with his family. Um, and he's going to do um, talks at like maximum and that sort of stuff. Yeah. So he's, he's obviously staying in the hobby. So I lost his passion for the hobby. Um, so, and he, what he said was he was going to come back um, refreshed and excited in 2025. Um, they didn't, this, this hasn't really been a proper announcement. They, I'm sure there'll be a video soon. Yeah. that actually announces it properly. Um, I was a little surprised they kind of just snuck it in at the end there. But um, yeah. anyway, I'm sure they'll they'll do it soon. They haven't said whether or not they'll keep making videos. I'm almost certain they will. They've got Thomas. They've got um, uh, Remy. Uh, not Remy. What's his name? Matthew. <laughs> and various other people who can step in. Yeah. They can't. You can't replace um, Ryan because no one can. But um, can we can we get take that that um no that Ryan kind of of that. we can't replace Ryan because no one can. In fact, no. anything that you hear in this in this live stream that you think can be put together, send it to me later. <laughs> I'm gonna start saying his full name and go Ryan Bachelor every time now. Yeah, but so I can literally just you... cut the end off. <laughs> Ryan Bachelor. <laughs> yeah. anyway um so he said he's going to come back refreshed and excited and it might well be the, th the thing that actually he goes away and actually setting up a tank is is really good because he, he he does that in the office tanks but setting up your own tank is different so it might be that he goes away does a load of scuba diving comes back revitalized and he's back in in it i i just to be honest i i would love I would, of course i would love him to come back but the main thing i think is i'm i'm actually happy for him that he's taking a break yeah almost jealous <laughs> he, he looks it's... at my life when i'll have some of that <laughs> yeah exactly but just that he's 16 years 2000 videos he and because this is like you and i are not really youtubers we run channels but we're not professional youtubers that's his basically his full-time job yeah and that's proper intense and everything is on his shoulders because he makes 90 percent of the videos um on that channel and also lately, I, I suspect, actually, although he said he's been stuttering with 52 Weeks Reefing and all these sorts of things, that ha that series hasn't been very well received. Um, and I suspect some of the criticism he's got has, has played into it as well. It makes you a bit fed up. And also, you can talk all you like. And I sometimes say, oh, yeah, I'm not, not going to bother chasing the algorithm. But when, a video, when you make a video and it does well, you feel good. And when you make a video that doesn't do well, you feel bad. And you yeah. can't, there's nothing, it doesn't make you a bad person. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, and so if, if you're making videos and they're not doing well, especially with 52 weeks, didn't really do that well this time around, whereas last time it was huge. And it yeah, must yeah. be a little bit heart, disheartening to be putting all your effort into it with all this knowledge that he's gained. And, and money. Not doing as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Because so, although they would have got some stuff for free, I'm sure. I'm sure that it would have cost them, even running the tanks would probably have cost them more than they would have earned from the actual videos. <laughs> Oh, they, they'll have done all right. Those they're very good for marketing. Those videos, yeah, that's so, true. That's even true. even like passive marketing, but um, but yeah. So it, I don't know who's gonna who's gonna take over. And there's not been a proper announcement, but that is Ryan from Ryan Bachelor <laughs> from BRS is stepping aside for about a year, probably. Yeah. Um. So we got no more, no more, no more. Fifty two weeks of reading. You should have named the title of this. Ryan is leaving. Yeah, because then that really would have like people in the comments were like, "Yeah, good, good." Yeah, well, thank God you've got rid of him. Who are you getting to replace him? Um, but yeah, so that's that's the headline news. Um, so he's 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 going. Um, there's uh, the people. So I think he's they've got, BRS have come in for a lot of criticism since Aperture took over. Some of it fair, some of it unfair. I think, and I've seen various comments about. Um, uh, 52 weeks and BRS generally lately. I think some of it is is understandable criticism, but some of it is is way over the top, and people are far too harsh. Because uh, like even criticizing the, the the standard, the videos still really good, really interesting, and loads of knowledge, really really useful. Better than ours. <laughs> yeah, better than well, better than yours, you know. <laughs> yeah, better than mine. <laughs> better than ours. So, um, and still, I think really valuable. But and I'll miss him. And this is so. This is like a lot of people with when Randy was around. Remember Randy at, at BRS? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people were like, ah, yeah, he's kind of second fiddle. He's not as uh, as good as, as as Ryan. And then when Randy left, everybody was like, ah, oh, bloody hell, I miss him. Where's Randy? Yeah. <laughs> and you realize you realize how much he did and how actually good he was. And yeah. so people will be the same with 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 Ryan. I think ninety percent. To be fair, I think it's a small minority. Ninety percent are, are, are behind him and and appreciate him, that sort of stuff. Probably more than ninety percent. But I just wonder yeah. why. Why do people care? enough to have a strong opinion on anything to do with this hobby 
<laughs> the hobby doesn't matter, does it? Really? <laughs> oh well, no. the, the the hobby does, but all the surrounding stuff doesn't. No, I know. There's just so much nonsense, but it's probably with everything. But like, why would anyone care that BRS was taken over by a big company? That like, I think is fair enough because basically that's what it feels like. The people people are concerned about when a company like a venture capitalist firm comes in you uh, corner the market and raise the prices and you 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 treat other companies unfairly so for example because all like ecotech uh, neptune ai and maybe i think oh, another company I can't remember they're all under one roof yeah. suddenly brs is all part of that same group so brs can make a lot more profit or that that whole company can make a lot more profit and uh, there's there's all sorts of things about controlling prices and all this sort of stuff so I'm learning about you... economics today yeah, I will do I know about economics. And this is all in America as well, which I don't I see some of it, but it's different when you're not in the country. So I I don't really know, but I get why people get upset about it. Um and I don't think it I don't think that's unfair as such. Because they're, they're buy, concerned about monopoly. Could they buy elsewhere or other products? What do you mean? Well, could they oh, people? Yeah. 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 So if they can buy elsewhere or other products. Right with your feet. Why why do you why are you mad? <laughs> but I, I get that. I get that because it's like Amazon coming in and suddenly all the uh, small business go out uh, of business. Yeah. I don't but, know. I think I'm too easy going. I don't worry about things that don't directly, directly like day to day affect me. <laughs> but this, if it was, it's different because in America, BRS is huge and it's the main thing. And if yeah. there was an equivalent over here, yeah. we'd probably feel more passionate about it. But maybe. Um, but anyway, so that is, that's the Ryan stuff. Uh, and that's, um, that's all I have to say, really. There's, uh, we'll watch out. I'm interested to see his, um, like you, I'm, I'm leaving video. I'd yeah. love it if he was, I think he'll probably be quite upbeat and like trying to be positive, but I'd love it if he was like really honest. And I'm not saying that he's hiding things, but if he was really open and just talked about the good and the bad and, and why it's so difficult, because I've seen yeah, lots yeah. of YouTubers do that recently. And I find it really interesting. It's a really in interesting insight. So I'd love him to, to, to talk really openly. Um, and maybe it's just as simple as that. I'm a bit fed up and there's nothing more to it, but I'd just, I'd love to hear the full story. I wonder if this, cause I, I remember, I don't watch, obviously I, I don't watch a lot of YouTube, whereas you seem to watch the entirety of YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> Alex has this uncanny thing where I go, have you heard of this YouTube? He's like, yeah, yeah, I've seen it. <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't even have to be fish related. It can be anything related. Yep. Um, there was a video that he put out when it when, remember when he had he put a big tank in his house and it wasn't a success another yeah, big yeah, tank yeah, yeah. so again another person you would go this person can have success who didn't have success in like with with doing it mm. um that was when i th it, it, looking back now it feels to me that was when he, he was almost like done if you see what i mean like i remember that video go like and him just thinking i feel like that sometimes so yeah, yeah. it was probably then, but he just kept going, like fighting through it. He kind of looked beaten. And that was, I really liked that video because that was, again, that was, you can, you saw through to his soul. Yes, he was, yeah. he was being really open and saying, look, I've failed. And actually for someone like him to admit that was, I think most people will be supportive, but there'll be plenty of people who won't. It's yeah. difficult to do. So I had massive respect for that because it didn't work out. And it's like, and especially because there'll be some people who, who think, hang on, you've got every single, um, there's no reason to, no excuse for you to fail. You've got yeah. the knowledge, you've got the support, you've got the connections, you've got the money, you've got the equipment. So yeah. for him to fail, people would have been putting him on a pedestal. And that was, that was a big deal for him to be so yeah. honest. I, I, I really enjoyed that video. I just felt like it was almost like you connect with him. You can, you really, you feel what he's, what he's talking about, what he's saying. Well, if you think about it, I don't. Really, I couldn't tell you one other BRS video that stands out in my mind as much as that one, other than the Chromis tank. <laughs> yeah, Chromis. <yeah, the> <laughs> because I'm still waiting to see. <laughs> I wonder but, if they'll shut it down. <laughs> but yeah, I do, I wonder if they'll be uh, if they'll still keep doing like that project mm. because it, how? Well, I suppose they can continue without him. It'll just be weird. I don't. The thing is when. Whenever so, there's a, a motorbike channel I, I watch called Fort Nine. It's brilliant, yeah. Um, and it's a Canadian guy, and he the, there was a Canadian guy again called Ryan actually, <laughs> and he was making the videos on that channel for years. And then yeah. they started to expand and make and upload more regularly. And so they took on a they had like million plus subscribers, and they took on a second presenter type who does some bit like one in five videos he'll present. And when he first, the first video he did, everyone in the comments was like. Oh, this guy's rubbish. No, I want Ryan. Get him back. Get him off. I yeah. want Ryan back. And it was they were, everyone was panning him. And then, like four or five videos later, 
people were like, this guy's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. And it's just that change. People don't like change, do they? And yeah. so I so the, if if they if they put someone else doing the chromis tank, at first, you, you're gonna have to if if you're that person, you're gonna have to be put your flak jacket on because you're probably yes. a bit of a, a pasting. <laughs> but and stick with it because it will get better. But um <laughs> they could only use one of the people I think that they already uh, that are, is already on the channel. I don't think they could bring a new person in. But Matt, so the only two that they've got that are regular are Matthew and Thomas, and they're yeah. really good at what they do. Yeah. But I don't think they're they're too different from Ryan, and I don't think I don't think that I don't think they would do the same job. I think you need I don't it was just such big shoes to fill. Who would you get to fill those shoes? Exactly. So, so if they bought a, if they bought someone no one has seen before, they really are going to be absolutely slammed. It would be like being the actor that comes on after Led Zeppelin <laughs> or the Beatles, you know. They should ask Randy to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they did that, like Randy went to work for some gun gun channel or something. Yeah, I, uh, there's there's uh, oh, what's there's there's a gun, really famous gun that's probably the best selling gun in America, I think. A9, I can't remember. Anyway, he went to do that because uh, he was, I think he was in the army before, maybe. Yeah. But that one thing actually on that point. So he, because Randy left, I think Randy said at the time, because Aperture came in and it all changed, it wasn't fun anymore, which is part yeah. of the reason that he left. And it got, it wasn't a, a small family and BRS grew and all that. And I do wonder if actually that's part of it with, with Ryan now. I suspect yeah. less so for him because it's, it's his show and he has free reign to do what he wants, more or less. But I do wonder if that's partly because if you, if you lose people like Randy, um maybe uh maybe some of it uh, drops off because the people are, are the best thing about the place you work yeah but um but I, I kind of you and i have talked about um burnout youtube burnout before and and all that sort of stuff and i, I talked to you a couple of months ago i texted you and said you could tell instantly what I was, where i was going yeah what did I, I think my response was why are you being a big baby <laughs> <laughs> that, that wasn't what that wasn't my response i can't remember what i said but i was like do you ever think about quitting or or tell me when you when you thought about quitting youtube or whatever i'm like oh god alex wants some attention <laughs> again cool for help. come on then <laughs> i called you up didn't i straight away yeah 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 but yeah it's because it's, it's it's hard and uh yeah it can lots of people do leave and it's if you've been doing it for 16 years like he has yeah but i, I love that he's having a break for him i think that's yeah. wicked uh and a year off is a good period i hope he commits to that doesn't try to come back after a month thinking he's missing it or whatever i suspect he'll love having time to his himself with his family the scuba diving his own tank all that sort of stuff so i i'd, I'd love him to take the full break refresh himself yeah. come back but do come back <laughs> there you go so there is there's that part of the news there's so many chats coming in by the way ar15 is the gun thank you um yeah that is uh there's so many comments coming in i can't keep up with everything i've noticed that there seems to be a lot more comments there's a lot more people who aren't this. normally here because of, it's the topic so you know. ah, i see um but yeah it's uh oh hang on woody's gamer tag by the way is a, is a i think he's got a million subs so he says he's made over three thousand videos and I haven't read one of my own YouTube comments in years. <laughs> At some point, you just don't want to hear it. So that's that's a small part of it. To be fair, I think the I think the, the YouTube comments is a very small part of what um what can stress you out. But the, the you ninety nine percent of comments from on YouTube are positive, and yeah. actually some of them are really overflowing positive and actually really nice things to say. And it's really it boosts you a bit. But the, it's the what you 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 because everyone said you're used to people saying oh great video you I love your stuff all that sort of stuff you kind of get blasé you're like yeah 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 and then a bad one comes along and it sticks with you yeah like they, so the the guy who said who called this video clickbait <laughs> yeah. I, I, I thought about that in my head so much and what I thought about actually I'll just I'll tell you this anyway so because clickbait is that you're baiting something right so if you're baiting a fish yeah you're giving it what you think what it you know it thinks is a meal but it's not a meal it's a hook. Yeah. And your sole purpose is to get it to bite that. Yeah. After it's bitten, you don't care about its journey because it's going to die. And that's yeah. your purpose. And that's so the equipment of so clickbait titles is all you're trying to do is get someone to click. And as soon as they've clicked, you don't care about their journey. So, for example, you might a clickbait video is a girl in a, a short skirt and a low cut top leaning over. And the thumbnail says, you won't believe what she did next. And then when what did you she do on, next? I need to know. Exactly. And then when you click on the video, it's a guy in a Ford Cortina driving around Asda car park. <laughs> that okay. is clickbait. And there's there's there are shades of grey, and there's it's not there's a spectrum, 
Yeah. So that is that is clickbait. A slightly enticing uh, title that leaves a cre- curiosity gap that makes you want to click. That is not clickbait. But it's, yeah. it's comments, like, and that didn't really bother me. To be fair, there are other comments that that, that that are much worse. But that's the sort of thing that does get you down. And I do wonder because fifty two weeks of reefing wasn't that well received this time round. Yeah. So I do wonder if I don't know if he reads them, if he reads comments. But I do wonder if that must get to you if you're getting panned. So seriously, what did she do next? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Oh, but, how disappointing uh, but then, for me. <laughs> there's also th- there's all the other things that go along because like making the videos is the fun part that we all enjoy. Like if you if you upload videos to YouTube, that's the bit that's fun. Is it? All the, <laughs> do you not think so? Mm, the creative process. And... I quite like. I don't know what part of it I like actually. And that's actually true. I don't like being on the camera. I, no. I don't like that bit. The videos I like the most, are the ones I have to put a lot of effort into. Yeah. So the ones where you write a script and then you like record it and you put the footage and you try and line it up and everything like that. Those are the ones I'm like proud of, if you see what I mean. So that those are the ones I do actually enjoy. The reason the for that is because it's the, the most satisfying ones are the ones where you feel like you're helping people. So you're, you're, you're saying yeah. something that's really useful or explaining things in a particular way that will help certain people or whatever. They are really satisfying. I think that's what most people get a kick out of. But there's yeah. all the other behind the scenes stuff. There's a pain in the backside. Like you might have to spend hours filming just nonsense for no apparent reason. Or yeah. and even even things like doing the taxes and making a note of your expenses yeah. and uh, and all it when it becomes a business like it like with Ryan, there must be untold um other things that he has to do, admin stuff. And that's yeah. all the stuff that gets you down. And all you want to do is make videos and, and write about uh corals and fish. And I bet he ended up. Doing, he, he was in a good position that I'm sure he had an editor and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But there, there's still so much stuff that you take on, that you build up, and you take on yourself that you can't let go of. That um that gets you down and it sucks the fun out of it. Exactly. And because then... YouTube for everyone starts as I've just realised this. It starts. No one goes into YouTube goes I'm going to build a company. They go no. into YouTube as a hobby. They, literally that's what it is it's something that's fun to do mm. and then as it gets more serious it is exactly the same with the coral farm the, it was a hobby for me originally and now it's more serious so i feel differently about the hobby than you would mm. if you see what i mean the, exactly the same thing is happening with with youtube as you get bigger and bigger mm. so i think i just had an epiphany <laughs> i need to go scuba diving you do need to go scuba diving you should yeah be. um but there you go. So that that's that's basically what's going on with with BRS Ryan. He's taking a, a twelve month break, and I'm really pleased for him. Um, I hope he has a, a comes back refreshed. I hope he has just hope he has a nice year where he can just chill out a bit because he's not only is he like the, heading up BRS, he must, he does so much and two thousand videos in sixteen years. I've made four hundred in six seven years something like that and that's quite a lot how much two thousand is in did you say 16 years 16 years i worked out it was more than one well it's obviously more than one a week but tell me well so it's 125 a year so if you divide that by 52 it's just 2.5 per per week that's mental and it's more than (laughs) 10,000 as well that's that's a lot of videos so he like because people talk about the youtube treadmill which you mentioned earlier yeah. That for me, like, and YouTube treadmill for me, I find it hard making one video a fortnight. To be honest, why do you find it hard? Is it a lack of time or ideas, or is it lack of motivation? It's definitely not ideas. I've got a list of fifty to one hundred ideas, and all I need, and I get more ideas all the time. The ideas are really easy, and there's so Can many things. Some of them? <laughs> no, you can't. You can buy them off me. Um, nice. but it's the, the having the time and sometimes the inclination, particularly yeah. if, and I, I like. The thing is, to be completely honest, when you're making YouTube videos, you want to get views. You don't you don't make a video just to get views and you don't care about anything else. You want to make you want to make the and you get views by making good videos. So you're motivated by that. But no matter how much you can say, oh, I don't care about the algorithm. I just want to upload what I upload. It's difficult because you get that endorphins from getting views. So there, there are times when if you're not getting views and you're putting a lot of effort into it and you're you know, pouring your heart and soul into something and you're not getting anything back out or it doesn't feel like you're getting anything back out of it because you don't get like 10,000 people. You don't get to see them watching. That's a lot, yeah. but you don't, you don't get much back out of it. Then that does get that hard, that's hard work. It's disheartening. How much is 10,000 people worth to you? 
just to clarify. <laughs> I've just people don't realize this. How much is ten thousand oh, people pounds and you? pence? Yeah, in pounds and pence. Oh no, I uh, uh, it's, I think it's about two dollars for a thousand views. So that would be twenty dollars. Twenty dollars, sixteen quid. And by the way, I've got to pay tax and buy cameras and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> YouTube is a uh, a labor of love. Is what and unless you're a big a big dislike. channel, yeah, yeah, it's a labor of love. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or if you can find some other way to make money, like, uh, have you ever heard of this website called um, Reefdog or Etsy? reefdog.etsy.com i have it's they make fantastic 3d Stuff. printed uh, <coughs> accessories like this hannah refractometer check holder that also holds the milwaukee one was this but the I've one also... that was being made today while i was there of exceptionally high quality <laughs> that's not but there is another one but i've also okay. heard of prestigereef.co.uk the uk's nice. best coral selling website yeah so at the end of this video you're going to tell everyone to go buy some coral exactly <laughs> um yeah 10k is about 20 dollars says woody get woody's game yeah time. Oh, and, and Christmas is more. So this is the thing. It's everybody. Every channel has different um, uh, payment rates. So yeah. there's all sorts of CPM and RPM, all this. Stuff. But uh, at different times a year, because so with uh, Christmas, for example, more people are interested in buying. So advertising space is worth more. So that's yeah. why they pay more. And if if you've got particularly um, uh, <laughs> finance, if you run a finance channel, people who watch finance videos are more likely to spend money. So they get paid more. Their revenue per thousand views is more whereas with, with and i find so it's it's quite difficult to predict so there are some videos i've seen where i've made a video and it's like per thousand views it's two yeah. or three times as good as the last video and it's like yeah, yeah. What, what about that video that was so good but and the thing so you can't i can't anyway, i'm not clever enough to do it i can't work that out and then target those kind of videos but um and i don't know if anyone can youtube's so difficult to predict there's time there's been times when i've made put a ton of effort into something made it as good as i think it can be and it's a really good topic i've got the thumbnail right i've got the title right everything is right and it's bombed and you're like and then there are other times when you up you spend 10 minutes you upload it and it does really well so I'd give a, a, it. <laughs> there is only one guarantee with regards to youtube and this hobby you put out a video about jellyfish people will watch it <laughs> I don't know why the jellyfish videos get so many views. Sometimes it's millions. Um, do you remember uh, Dan's Reef? Dan's Reef, yeah. Yeah, I think he had put out a jellyfish video, and it had like four million views or something. So every other one of his like videos had hardly any, and then his and, and it had. I'm sure maybe it might not have been four million. It might be a million, but mm. still, a million people is a lot of people. He took his channel down. I never did understood he? why he did that. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't exist anymore. Oh. I don't know if he's just hidden it, but that still would have generated some money, anyway. Yeah, I, I don't. Well, I think he was a police, uh, a police person, uh, like a police was man. He? Yeah, I think that was that was oh, what he did know. as a job. I think, um, and I think that he got a lot of there was a lot of negativity about his content, but also <laughs> like it was some of it was quite personal, and yeah. I just thought it's so like it's so unfair if you see what I mean. To do that some, to someone. There was some bullying on Facebook, is how I would describe it. Yeah. From some quarters. So, um and he got he got yeah, he just I don't know. But yeah, that happens, doesn't it? So, I'm just having a quick look at what my jellyfish video is. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, we, we're gonna move on because there's plenty That's more fine. news as well. That's um fine. so if you were just here for the BRS stuff, keep going anyway, because this is there's interesting news coming up. Just, uh, just very quickly, four hundred and six thousand views. On my jellyfish video. <laughs> it's not bad. Um, well, we're going to move on to... So first off, actually, I'm going to do that at the end. So there's a... Ah, oh, coral bleaching news. This is bad oh, is news. Yeah, so there's, you know, Lord Howe Islands, Lord Howe Ensis, uh, yes. Micromusa, Lord Howe Ensis, Lord Howe, Island, Lord Howe Islands in the Great Barrier Reef, Southern Great Barrier Reef, have had their worst heat stress event since 1985. And there's a, a bleaching. This is... Uh, so this is that's the Lord Howe Islands, um, and there's a big bleaching event going on also at Norfolk Island, um, off the Gold Coast as well. So lots of corals um, struggling and suffering, and there is a picture of bleached coral off uh, Lord Howe Island. Scientists fear worse to come. So this is like that Netflix documentary Chasing Coral when they went around mapping these um, stressor yeah. events. It sounds like they're expecting something quite serious like this again. So bad news. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what to, what else to say. It's just this: you you okay, get these. It's almost like you become numb to this news because you get it every year. 
Yeah, you see yeah. what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, they're just, you know, they're just doing that thing, you know, where they bleach again. Well, Jamie but, Craig, one of the things Jamie Craig's is doing is trying to uh, to to make heat resistant corals. So yeah. if a coral doesn't bleach when you turn the temperature up, you take that coral and you you you, um, you breed it. Yeah. And then you and and then it's you you can potentially reintroduce it's very complicated how you actually go about reintroducing it, but potentially you could then reintroduce heat resistant corals that are more likely to survive more hardy. I've seen them do that. Uh, elsewhere as well where they they'll 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 be a, like a mass bleaching event and there and there might be like five or six corals which survive mm -hmm. and they they take those into captivity frag them up um because those are the ones that did survive like yeah. the worst event in the ocean and then they like grow them and then put them back out yeah but there must um, be a limit to how heat resistant something can become yeah yeah you can't, you're not gonna <laughs> boil it yes <laughs> Um, but there you go. So that's uh, that's bad news, I'm afraid. Good news, though. Yeah. And right. So if you're watching this and you've never seen this before, Ryan loves equipment. You can't get enough of it. Whereas I'm more about the uh, the fish. So true. True. Um, and there is good news for Ryan. Then is there is a new light coming out, an LED light, and you love LEDs. You change um, them all the time. Yeah. Just. It is the Z, Z Light X9, and it's got like a cluster of LEDs. That this looks a bit Kesselly. It's a uh, uh, hundred watt, basically, which is equivalent to a, a Radeon XR15, um, Kessel A360X, and various others. Um, and it doesn't give a price. It doesn't tell you much more. But uh, the only thing they did say is that oh no, sorry, it did. It does give a price, uh, two hundred dollars, which is a bargain. That's half the price of what I would expect from an equivalent light Radeon Kessel, that sort of thing. So that's a bargain potentially. The one thing they said on Reef Builders, they said was. Um, I know you're smirking because you're, you're... No, you're read the last comment. Uh, watch Ryan's eyes glaze over in real time here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, so the, um, so one thing Reef Builder said was that Zetlight, this is from Zetlight, of course, and they're known for offering that other companies will take their lights and then uh, put their own uh, brand on it and use their lights, white labeling. Yeah. Um, so that might happen. Actually, the, the Zetlight, if you've got a Neptune refugium light, that's made by Zetlight. That's a Z light. You can go and buy. You can go on AliExpress and buy the Z light equivalent, which is the same light for a lot less money. Don't know if it will integrate with Neptune. Probably won't. Fascinating. I was really interested in that. I hate. <laughs> I the comment section makes me self conscious. It says Ryan's Ryan's face is a picture. I'm just looking normally. <laughs> the good news is yeah. there is some stuff that Ryan really does like. Yeah, like what? One fish. I got yes. fish news for yes. you, Ryan. Come on, bring on the fish. They've discovered a new ras. Is it brown? <laughs> it's not brown. Actually, I've seen this. It's red, isn't it? It is. Halicori Sanchezi. It's off the yeah. coast of Mexico somewhere. It was an archipelago, they said. I can't remember. <laughs> Mexico. Um, and it's this bad boy. I now, these are, oh. these are very white light. These are photos under very white light, um, sort of uh, whiter than you would normally see them. And like, almost, I think that's like that looks like a flash photography. So I think in our tanks, they might look a bit better. But that that's all right. That doesn't, I don't... Yeah. That's not that doesn't stand out, and I think I've got to have one. But they're better. Some of the the fish that we see on that we talk about on this uh, this live stream, they're like brown gobies. They're boring. <laughs> it looks <laughs> like a flag. Is that a Swedish flag? No, that's blue and yellow. Uh, Austrian. <laughs> I don't know. There's, Swiss, a there's a red cross, a red flag with a white cross. I'm gonna. I'm, you can keep going. I'm gonna find out what that flag. Vexillology is. with Ryan Marchant. It is. It's Switzerland. Switzerland. Yeah. What did That's I not say? The same as Sweden. Oh, I, I said Sweden. Sweden. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I was obviously, I was obviously thinking, you know, Switzerland is um is a very expensive country, but their flag is a big plus. Flag is a big plus. I must have joked up. It's literally a big plus. Oh yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, true. Move on. Terrible. Um, a bad joke. Uh, next, more fish news. More fish news. Yes. What's your What's your favourite angelfish? You won't. Uh, probably a regal. The king eyes I'm pretty fond of at the moment. Yeah, so I'd rather say a regal angel or that. A regal angel or a king eye angel? Yeah. How about a regal angel crossed with a king eye angel? You're joking, are you? I, I, I'm so glad you said that. This is Pomelab. <laughs> <laughs> bred, captive, bred in captivity. A regal angel crossed with a tiger, a king eye. That is unbelievable. Do you, because do you know why? Why? They're not even the same, like, subspecies. Yeah, yeah. Or genus, yeah. yeah. So... 
Like, because the Regal Angels are in a genus all on their own, I believe. Pygoplites diacanthus, and the tiger <laughs> yeah. is Apolicomythis, Apoly King Eye. <laughs> yeah, the, the King Eyes are the same as the, um, what is it? Uh, like gold flakes and things like that. They're very similar from a similar right, family. Okay. So crossbreeding completely different genuses is very unusual. This photo is obviously taken, the guy's pulling it out, it's under very, again, white light. So it's difficult to see how that would actually look. And I would love to see a proper photo of them. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, what's it? Oh, there's a company. I can't remember what they're called that take excellent photos, but it, they, we showed a photo earlier. Anyway, um, that the only thing I'll say about this fish is it's got, it, it, so that looks like a regal to me, but with boring dark stripes. So that's like they, they've made a worse regal angel. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you juvenile can't see regals it. don't look like that. Uh, juvenile regals. Juvenile, what well, I'm saying, juvenile regal angels don't have the blue on them. So maybe the light, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah they change color as they get older. But that, so I'd, I'd like to see a better photo, basically. Yeah. But that's potentially cool as hell. Yeah. But, and I thought, I, I'm, I, I'm surprised I missed that article. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I really like that, actually. <laughs> There you go. How much would you pay for that fish? That is like a twenty thousand dollar fish. Oh, it's probably quite expensive, isn't it? I mean, a king eye angel is expensive enough on its own. Yeah. Um, but probably, I mean, I wouldn't pay. I'd probably pay a grand for it, but I suspect it won't be sold for a grand. <laughs> no, no. So, but they'll be popping up in shops soon. Don't you worry. Same as the the uh, the Yerple tanks. Oh, indeed. Um, there was one other story that I forgot to read about before I, I so I loaded it up and I meant to read it and then I got distracted. Um, but there's a couple more bits in the news. First is this is from a, a new tank system from Ultum Nature Systems. Uh, it's called the UNS Reef System. Uh, but I didn't read any about it. It looks kind of cool. It's got beveled edges. Look at that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I was just thinking, how, like, how is that? How can you make a tank unique these days? <laughs> yeah, but like, do you know what? So there, there's all the lots of companies do make them totally differently, but it's subtle things that you probably wouldn't know, especially if you're buying yeah. your first tank. You're not going to notice. Yeah, and this is this looks good, but there's nothing on there that I looked at and I thought that's amazing. When I first got the water box, I was like, "Yes, it's got a glass weir box. This is amazing." And not <laughs> once recently have I thought about that in probably the last six months. <laughs> Yeah, okay. There, to be fair, there's lots of little features in here that are clever. I would guess, does it say a price? I don't think it does. I would guess this is quite expensive because yeah. it's got quite a lot of features. That's a feature rich. That's not just a standard off the shelf um, tank. So I would guess that's expensive. And if it's not expensive, well done for making an awesome tank uh, yeah. affordable because I do think that is cool. And it's just, it's great that there's another option. There's Red Sea Waterbox Gade, uh, Neptunium Cube now, DD. Reef Casa, yeah, yeah. I wish I'd see. I didn't see that tank today. Oh yeah. As I was driving home, I was thinking, oh, I wish I'd seen it because I wanted to see that little fish you've got. Yeah, the oh the mimic fell fish. That's a shame. Yeah. Okay. Well, never mind. Um. So there's uh there's uh there's that bad boy that tank. Uh, you can go check it out on reefbuilders.com for more details. Two more stories which are in Bahama Llamas. Who, in the house. Yeah, I was gonna say you see who just come in. All right, Remy, friend of the show, Remy um hello we finished talking about uh brs i'm afraid but wine back <laughs> yeah um two more bits of news uk centric news first is there's another coral show in may which was foreshadowed earlier it's called love to reef uh hang on a second there it is so this is the website love to reef.com love to the number two reef.com uh it's on the 18th of may tickets are 20 pounds each and it's uh there are about 200 tickets available so there'll be a uh, attendance of roughly 200 people so this is the third year it's been running they've actually got quite a few um vendors lined up let me go back onto that so they've got um aac is at aac they've got nios ecotech red sea neptune tmc various that's quite impressive that's a decent lineup for a small show um i wonder if some of them are like grouped together where there's a like a distributor because yeah, easy Reef, for example and ict i think are the same like TMC will be will have Tropic Marin stuff on their stand, for example. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And maybe they'll have ocean industry. But anyway, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, ocean, uh, Collective Corals, that's a coral vendor. So they'll be, <laughs> if you're looking to buy corals, there'll be probably stuff from AAC and from Collective Corals and EK Marines. I think they're a coral vendor. So quite a good lineup. Yeah. Um, it's on the 18th of May. I'm not going. I mentioned earlier, I'm going to a, a concert that weekend. Um, but yeah, it's down in the south of England in Harlow. So there you go. Go and check it out. 
and the other thing uh uk based is there's a you know did you see there was a top shelf aquatics um coral growing out uh competition yes yeah um uh moki's part of it isn't he he is and, and queen of queen reef, reef i think yeah was doing remy it. May, remy no not remy no i don't think uh I can't remember. There were a few Awkward. people. He's here. Don't remind him. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he was or wasn't, if, to be fair. So. Anyway, whatever. There are a few people there um, who, and I've seen a couple of updates, but not many. Yeah. There's a UK one, um, which is uh, in, in uh, association with um, Signature Frags. Okay. Uh, and it's on ultimatereef.com. So if you go on Ultimate Reef and search Signature Frags uh, Coral Growing Competition or something like that, you'll find it. And there's, I can't remember what call they're using, but there's, there's an acro coral and there's just, there's a thread on Ultimate Reef about it. And you can join in and have a bit of banter, share your, um, your, your coral successes and just, it's just a fun competition. So yeah. if you want to get involved in a, a coral growing competition in the UK, now's your chance. And the, the, the forum is really good because then everyone talks about it and you, it's just fun. So there's that as well. And that means that we are at the end of the news. <laughs> And the end of the news usually means the end of the show. Yeah, so you rushed, you rushed the first bit, didn't you? I know. I yeah, yeah um, I did. It didn't I just, me. No, no, no. And I, I just felt so... Because the trouble is, I, I actually don't like having a thumbnail like this because I know it's going to get attention. Yeah. And actually, this, this, there's about 300 people watching Peak, which is less than I thought it might be. But I don't like that because this is not... Uh, this, this live stream is not about one thing. It's yeah. never about the thing, just the thing on the thumbnail. It's a, it's a, a, I think the people who watch it come back every week and enjoy it. This yeah. isn't, I'm not trying to appeal to everybody. I'm trying to, to make it awesome for the people who do like it. And when I make a thumbnail like that, I know I'm going to attract other people. Some people will love it and they'll be like, oh, this is cool. We'll, we'll watch it. But other people are like, mate, get on with it. Where's Ryan from BRS? So I don't like doing those thumbnails, but. So what you're saying is it's not about the the thumbnail and the title. It's really about us. <laughs> yeah, basically. If yeah, and, and yeah, and we talk. Yeah, anyway, whatever. Um, fine. So there we go. And I think that's there's so many um, there's so many comments. I'm sorry, yeah, I missed yeah. it. It's, it's, it's too many. Thank you so much for contributing and and, and joining in. Um, I wish I could have caught up. I'll, I'll watch this back and I'll watch the comments. So you know, <laughs> I'll see everything. But I'm afraid it's uh, it's been too much to keep on top of. Uh, but there we go. Anything else you want to talk about, Ryan? Anything else? What else? What's going on in your farm? Any new corals or anything? Or... No. As no. I said, I like. Well, I've got the corals from you today. Um, I'll be. I'm interested to see what those zoas turn out to be because you just were like, "Do you want these zoas? These, these random pieces? Oh, they're just. Um, they're just utter chaos. It's all utter chaos. The utter chaos is no, love. No, as in, there's some stuff in there that's not utter chaos. Definitely. Oh, laser lemons. I oh, don't ruin it for me. I was. It was like in my own mystery box. <laughs> That laser so, lemon is really nice. I really like it. I'm selling a colony on Ultimate Reef, by the way. That co that's a little colony. I was I was going to keep it. The one you told me you were going to keep. I know. Selling. Half an hour later, I was like, I'm going to sell it. <laughs> how much? How much is it? 150. Mm, I'll think about it. I, I <laughs> I, I, like that might be a really really good deal. I have no. It's, it is big. Um, more of the fact, do I want to drive all the way back there to get it? <laughs> I'll drop it down to you. Excuse to get on the bike. If you want it, mm, I'm one of those annoying people that goes, uh, that inquires, but doesn't actually, ha is not actually serious about it. So, yeah. so they go, Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. interested. They never come back to you. Well, I'm going to sell it on Ultimate Reef anyway. So that's true. That's true. But there we go. You're it's lucky. Like... You can sell there. I can't. So, no, this is true. You could do if you signed up. No, I don't think you could. Anyway, no. I no, have an account. I've had an account for years, but you can be a sponsor. Signature practice. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Saying. Um, anyway, thank you all for watching, guys. Um, really appreciate everybody joining in. And Ryan, thank you for coming as ever. Uh, okay. Go and check out uh, signature, uh, signature Facts. Press oh, 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 no. That's like that was like when you call like uh, if you if you called your girlfriend another woman's name. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Your ex. <laughs> um, yeah, prestigeview.co.uk for all your coral needs in the UK. Um, and we will be back next week. With oh, and also go buy stuff from reefdog.exe.co.uk.com. Dot com. Dot com. Close oh, yeah. enough. Thank you, guys. Okay. Cheers. See you later.